na. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. 
It's been good from the word go this morning. Seems like uh, since we come into the prayer room this morning, just uh, just felt the presence of the Lord. And the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen. Amen. There's liberty, and liberty is freedom. Amen. That freedom's been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ, and uh, where we can get help. And there's liberty to get help today. David said, I look into the hills which cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord. I need the Lord's help today, don't you? It's a good place to get help. Amen. Thank the Lord for, for his, uh, uh, his presence today. Good to see each and every one in the Lord's house. And we got many that's visiting with us today. I don't want to start naming names, afraid I'll miss somebody. But if you're visiting with us, we're uh, tickled to death you're here. You're in a good place. Uh, the Lord's here, Amen. Amen. Anywhere the Lord's is at, Lord's at, that's a that's a good place to be, Amen. 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 Uh, thank the Lord. Anybody got anything on your heart today? Song, a word, a testimony, before we go any further. Amen. Uh, Miss Linda's uh, uh, called Grandma again. So uh, uh, Sarah had her baby this week. And, uh, beautiful little girl and healthy. Mama and babies both are doing good. And and, uh, and so we thank the Lord for that. And uh, Drew and Chastity is, is expecting. And uh, they announced that just recently. And, and we want to congratulate them as well. Uh, just a blessing, isn't it? It really is. A, a gift from God, isn't it? Amen. It sure, certainly is. Certainly is. Amen. All right. Now turn with us in the First John chapter number 1. First John chapter number 1. And I'm going to read a little bit there. And I'm going to read in uh, the book of Hebrews. As well, the book of Hebrews, chapter number nine. So, First John, chapter number one. That's little John. You stand with us, reading with God's word. And you find your place, and uh, then the book of Hebrews, chapter number nine. So, I'll read the book of Hebrews, chapter number nine first, uh, verse number eleven. Hebrews nine, verse eleven said, "But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not this, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood, He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us." For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a, and a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered up of Himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from a dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, He is the mediator of the New Testament. That means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, that which are called might receive of the, the, the promise of the eternal inheritance. I'll stop there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. And I pray, God, today, God, that you would just use us for your glory and your honor. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And we just pray, God, that you just use us for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Now, let's read also in 1 John chapter number, uh, chapter number 1. And I'm going to start... Uh, Verse 5, this then is the message of which we have heard of him and declared to you that God is light. I say amen to that, don't you? And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, we walk in darkness 
Uh, we lie and do not the truth. But we walk in the light as He is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm hung up on that word all. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Now, I was thinking today about uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. You read the book of Hebrews, and the book of Hebrews explains that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. From the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we've, uh, we've, all, uh, we've all sinned, and we've... Well, we were That we all needed a payment for our sins. But Hebrews explains to us, The law brought nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, whereby we draw nigh to Christ. And there was under the law, there was all kinds of sacrifices had to be made. The, the, all the, the, the daily sacrifices, the burnt offerings had to be made every day. But it did not pay the atonement for the sins. For our sins once and for all. It had to be done daily. And the atonement had to be done every year. But the Bible says for this man, speaking of Jesus, had somewhat to offer. Now, Hebrews 9 tells us that for if the blood of bulls and the blood of goats and, and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctifying to the purifying of the flesh... That was the sanctification of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The Bible says, for this cause He is the mediator of the New Testament. Amen. I'm thankful by what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that He offered up once and for all. Now on the day of atonement, the high priest had to make the, the atonement of the blood of the lamb without spot or blemish. And nothing wrong with that lamb. It was, it was pure. Amen. And, and so I, I, that blood of that lamb had to be put on the mercy seat behind the veil. And the, and the high priest, he was just like me and you. So he had to offer himself a, a sacrifice for his sin first before he'd go back there. Because if he'd go back there uh, without being cleansed, he'd, he'd die back there because it was a holy place. Nobody could go back there but by the high priest. He had to be worthy. All right? Jesus was the lamb of that spot of blood. He became the lamb and he became the high priest. He was the only one that could make the sacrifice once and for all. His blood. And the Bible says when he cried it is finished. The veil in the temple. That veil was a partition between us and God. We couldn't get to him. But Jesus made a way for us to get to him. Amen. I, I, I've heard a new song. Well, it's been out for a while, but it, it's been new to me. And, and it, it, it says, just a carpenter, you say, let me tell you what he's been, built. Amen. It's talked about Jesus built a way to heaven. 
so that I could, so that it would save my dying soul from hell. Amen. Jesus made a way for us to get to God. Amen. 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 For all is sin and come short of the glory of God. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. I was thinking about uh, uh, Saul of Tarsus. He was a murderer. He, he murdered Christians. He persecuted the Christians and he thought he was doing justice. But one day God spoke to him. One day God shone the light from heaven and he woke him up and he said, Saul, Saul, why perfect? Persecutors thought that it is hard for you to see the kick against the priest. And so he, uh, he uh, uh, Saul realized that day that he was lost and he needed Jesus. Yeah. He saved him yeah. that day and he turned his life around and he made one of the greatest preachers out of him. Amen. The ground is level yeah. at the foot of the cross. Amen. Amen. I was thinking of this scripture in 1 John. It said this, but if we walk in the light he, as he is in the light, but if we walk in the light as he in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. From all sin. Amen. When the Lord saves you, when the blood of Christ is applied to your heart, amen, when you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. He don't just save just some of it. He don't forgive just some of it. He forgives all of it. I'm hung up on that word all today. When the Lord saved me of my sin, he, he saved, my, he cleansed all of it. Amen. 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 I'm thankful today that uh, God is no respecter of person. No matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been, I'm thankful that He is able. He's thankful today to forgive us of all our sins. Amen. 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 And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. 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 All of us. He didn't say, hey, but He saved all of us. Amen. 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 I'm thankful today that, that when, when he sees me now, he sees the blood. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. He views me in garments as white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy and he washed me this up. Amen. See, outside of Jesus Christ, my righteousness is still filthy rags. But the difference is the blood. The blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. When, when, when he sees the blood, he sees me worthy. Amen. Amen. I, I, was, I was thinking of, of the victory that we have in the Lord. There's scripture that speaks about the victory that, that we have in Jesus Christ. And... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, talking about the resurrection. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, those of you young people, you, you, play, you play ball. When there's a victory, that means somebody's been defeated. Right? The other team has been defeated, therefore there's a victory. Well, listen, the devil's already been defeated. When Jesus paid the sin debt on the cross of Calvary, and when the blood of Jesus Christ was shed on the cross of Calvary, and the veil in the temple, I like to remind you, the veil's been rent. You got access to the throne of grace now. Romans chapter number five. Amen. We can get to God today. Amen. And because of that, we've got victory. And not only did He die for it, but He got up on the third day. Amen. He arose the third day when they thought they had him. They thought they had him killed. And they thought they had him gone and done away with. But he said, destroy this temple. And three days I'll raise 
And we claim victory. I don't have to wait till I die to claim victory in Jesus. Because Jesus became sin for me. He became cursed for me. He tasted death for me. Therefore I claim victory over sin. And I claim victory over death. Death is coming to all of us. It's appointed unto man wants to die and after this the judgment. Judgment's coming to all of us. But Jesus has made a way and built a bridge for us so we could be free. So we can claim victory. So we, and I don't have to wait to go to heaven to have victory. I can have victory in this life. I can have peace in this life. And peace don't come from the world. Jesus said, peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, but as I giveth unto thee. That's because the devil's already been defeated. Amen. His destination's already been set in Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone forever and forever. Therefore, I've got victory because I know where I'm going today. Now, that appointment's coming to all of us. I know a lot of you know Hoy Tipton. Hoy went to church up Sweetwater. He blessed me the other day. Uh, he was at the hospital and he was going to take him up to the nursing home and uh, back up there and his heart was giving out on him. And he told me, he said, to, ain't going to be around much longer. Ain't going to be around much longer. But he said, he said, to, you know, all of us is going to go, got to go that way sooner or later. But he said, I'm not afraid. I'm ready. And I said, you know, God's grace is sufficient, ain't it, boy? God's grace is sufficient. And when you know you're saved, you ain't afraid. And he wasn't afraid. He said that on a, one evening about to 4, 4.30. That next morning, around 4, 4, 4.30, that next morning, he left here. I believe God, I believe God gives them a little, sometimes I believe God has given, the saints have got a little inclination I'm a coming, but it's going to be all right. But he wasn't afraid. See, you don't have to be afraid because there's no sting to death to a child of God. Death don't have to be your enemy. Death can be your friend. I mentioned this earlier about Wayne's mother-in-law. I've never seen anybody in a shape like that in my life, and it breaks my heart. Scoliosis has bowed that lady over to where her face, she's laying down in the bed, but she can't straighten out. She's laying, bowed over to her face is on her lap. She's a child of God. Death is not her enemy. Death is her friend. Amen? To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. To live as Christ and to die as gain. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. We've got victory in the Lord. Amen. We're not. I, I, I heard a song about the old ship of Zion uh, years ago, and it, and it mentioned that this this ship is not like the sinking Titanic. It's the church, and she ain't a going down. Amen. Amen. We have victory. We have victory today. We don't have to live a defeated life. There's many today that's choosing to reject and neglect the plan of salvation. You've heard me say many a time, 
God don't send nobody to hell. They go there on their own. He sent His Son Jesus to die for whosoever, so we don't have to go to hell. Whosoever. For God so loved the world. That means everybody. Everybody. We sung that little song growing up. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious. You're precious. God sent His best for you. They're precious in His sight. For God so loved the world that whosoever. My mother, growing up, she used to teach my, me and my brother to put your name right there, a whosoever, because you're a whosoever. For God so loved Kevin Laws. Put your name there. For God so loved your name that He gave His only begotten Son that you, your name, Kevin Laws, your name, would not perish but have everlasting life. That you would have victory in Jesus. We, we, we sing that song, Victory in Jesus. And I believe we come callous to, to these songs we sung. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How He gave His life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. No matter how much money you've got, we all wretched. Without Him. How He gave His life on Calvary. To save a wretch like me. I heard about His groanings. Of His precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sin. And won the victory. Then I repented. That's all I done. Was repented of my sins. That's all you done. To have what you have. We, We like to take... Credit, well, I've done this, and I've been good, and I've done this. God's grace means God's unmerited favor. You've done nothing to deserve it. I've done nothing to deserve it. Never will either. You won't be earning your way to heaven. If we could earn our way and be good enough, we'd have been justified by the law, which was by works. Right? Jesus wouldn't have had to die for us. But Jesus fulfilled the law of righteousness through himself when he took upon his flesh and he conquered it. He overcame it so you can overcome. So you can be free. Amen? He's faithful today to cleanse me from all my sin. Not just part of it, Danny, but all of it. He don't save half of you. He saves all of you. He, he gets rid of it all. He casts our sins as far as the east is from the west to be remembered. No more. Not only does he forgive it, he forgets it. Man ain't like that. Man don't forget. Man likes, and no devil likes to bring it up. I remember a time. I remember a time the old accuser likes to bring up your past. But you know what you can do with your past? Get it under the blood. And when he brings it up again, show him the blood. My daddy's a preacher and I've heard my daddy uh, witness to a lot of people when they come and, and, and repent and when they come and get saved. He'll say, now, you remember this spot. Because the devil, he'll, he'll try to bring up things. He'll try to bring up your past. And when he does, you bring him back to this spot. Now I know, I understand that the Lord can save you anywhere. Wherever you got saved, that's your spot. Whether it's in a laurel thicket, a, 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 a woodshed, or, or a smokehouse, or in the house. And, uh, uh, some of my youngins, they, uh, uh, well I believe... Uh, I believe all three of my youngins got saved at the house. Living room, bedroom, and the bathroom. But that's their spot. That's their spot. They can take the devil back and say, "Uh uh-uh, devil, you ain't winning. You've lost. I got saved on the right-hand side of the the, the altar up there at the the Middle District Church in Beulah, North Carolina on a Wednesday night right before Thanksgiving in 1986. That's my spot. 
And I've had to go back there. Not physically, but I've had to go back there in my mind. When doubt tries to set in, when doubt and fear tries to bring up my past, I go back there. That's where the blood was applied. Amen. 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 I'm thankful today that I've got victory over that. You've heard me say that you knowing you're saved will get you through everything in your life. Because what, what, let's face it, life brings a lot of confusion, a lot of, of pain, a lot of, of doubts and fears. But when you know you're saved, when you know you're saved, that gets you through all the confusion, all the fear. You know what I'm saying? When your heart is about to break and you feel and you don't understand a lot of things, but you understand one thing. You're saved. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. We make this thing a lot more complicated than what it is. What did Jesus say to, to be saved? Trust me. Believe on me. He didn't say you have to do this and this and this and this and quit this and this and this. He does that for you. When He changes you and changes your nature, He'll change your ways. He cleans you up from the inside and out. There's a lot of people think, well, you've got to clean the outside before you clean the inside. Uh uh. He cleans the inside and he'll clean, he'll take care of the outside too. Amen. Amen. Inside. Pharisees, oh, they had a good show on the outside, but the inside, they, they wasn't clean. That's why Jesus said, He said, he called them hypocrites. He said, first you've got to clean the inside that the outside might be clean. Amen. I've heard, I've heard people say, well, what about this and what about that? God clean on the inside. He'll take care of the outside. Amen. 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 For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. Where the treasure is, over the heart be also. Amen. Where, where, you, where your treasure is. Now, we think about... To, that victory we have in the Lord today. Man, if you don't have that victory, that's a miserable life of worrying, ain't it? And God don't want you to God don't want you to be troubled about that. He's done made a way for you to have victory over that. Amen. Amen. God don't want you to be miserable. He wants you to have peace. Peace is I, peace I give it to you, not as the world give it, but as I give it unto thee. You can have victory. Because the enemy's already been defeated. The devil's already been defeated. So you and I, we've got victory. And if you're saved today and you're not claiming victory, you need to consider what Jesus has done for you. Consider that it's not you that's doing all this, but it's Him. It's all Him. Amen. Not of works lest any man should boast. We are saved unto good works. But you know the goodness in us. And the devil will try to tell you, you can't live right. Well, I guess that's the only thing that he ever says that's right. That's right. We can't live right. But Galatians 2 says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And... Not I, but Christ that liveth within me. Amen. That's right, I can't live right. And the life that I now live in my flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, it's not me, it's him. I can't live right. My righteousness outside of Jesus Christ, even though I've been saved for however many years, since 1986... I still, my righteousness is filthy rags within myself. But what makes the difference? Jesus. Amen. Jesus makes the difference. Amen. There's still nothing good in me. Because He didn't save my flesh. He saved my soul. Amen. So flesh is going back to the rest of the earth. But the soul is going to go back to the one that gave it. And that's God. Amen. And the soul is going to live forever. One of two places. 
And as much as we love to think about heaven, there is a hell. There's a burning hell. But hell wasn't made for you. Hell was made for the devil and his angels and those that reject the Son of God. You don't have to reject Him. You can accept Him today. He's faithful today. He's faithful. He's faithful when we're not. To cleanse us from all sin. All of it. I'm hung up on that word all. All my sin. You know, a lot of people, when they, when they find out the bad in you, they don't want them to have nothing to do with you. They like to distance themselves. From you. As long as they know the good about you, oh, it's all good and well. But when they find out the little bad in you, they try to distance themselves. The Lord ain't that way. He's got an unconditional love. His love is not conditional. Man's love, this old flesh love, it's conditional. We only love those that loves us and good to those that good to us. And, and when somebody does us wrong, we like to wash our hands with them. God ain't washed His hands. Ain't you glad God ain't that way? Boy, He could have had. He could have washed His hands with me a long time ago. Amen? He could have washed His hands with me a long time ago. And could you too? He still loves you. That's an unconditional love. That's a love that... Never fail. He sticker closer than any brother. Greater love hath no man than this than a man lays life down for his friends. Nobody's ever loved you like Jesus. Nobody's ever forgiven you like the Lord wants to forgive you. He won't just forgive some of your sins. He'll forgive them all. All of them. Therefore, I was thinking of that song. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flood that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Jane Ann, would you come to the piano? And I'd like for you to play that if you don't care. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. As God speaks to your heart today. The blood forgives it all. Forgives it all. The sacrifices of God is on the heart and the contrite spirit. And no wise will he cast it out. Just come honest before God today. Just to humbly, if the Lord Lord is speaking to your heart today, I want you to think about He'll take care of it all. Not just some of it. He'll take care of it all. All of it. Jesus made a way for us to be free. And He wants to take care of it all. But listen, the blood, the blood is the only way we can go to heaven. We're not worthy, but He made us worthy through His blood. And when we stand before Him on the day of judgment, He's not going to look and see how good a boy or girl you've been. He's going to look for the blood. The Bible says of the great white throne of judgment when the dead stand before God and the books are open and whosoever's name is not found in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, They'll be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone forever and ever where the beast and the false prophet are. Don't have to go, friend. You don't have to go there because Jesus made a way for you to go to heaven. Made a way for you to be saved. You might be here today and you might say, well, well, preacher, I've been saved, but 
I'm not living where I need to be. The prodigal came to himself and he, he said, I, I'm going to go back home and I'm going to ask my father to forgive me. He said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against thee. No word that be called thy servant. Let me, uh, uh, son, let me be one of thy hired servants. You don't have to live in the hog pen. The Lord made a way for you to live in the victory. The victory. Victory. Because the devil's been defeated. You don't have to live a defeated life and you don't have to die defeated. You can die with victory in your soul today. Let's all stand. And as God speaks, Christians pray. I want you to think about this song. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious hairs of flow that makes me White as snow, no other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now listen to the words. For my pardon, this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus.